In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys what I consider at least to be the best start in Morrowind. Now, this video isn't going to get too specific on builds. It's going to be more of a generic first start. So you should be able to make minor adjustments here and there to suit the build to your own needs. But in general, it should apply to most builds. And maybe in the future, I will make a more specific best start build. But this one is just going to be a generic one that you should be able to use for pretty much all builds in this game. Now, this is going to be the first decision you make. This one doesn't really matter all that much pretty much just choose whatever race you normally choose or whichever one best suits your class i'm just gonna go with dark elf because it's a pretty jack of all trades class in my opinion so i usually just go with the dark elf but it's not gonna matter for this build it shouldn't matter for your build and uh, literally just pick whatever you want honestly this one doesn't really matter now this is where things are going to start to matter a little bit more but they still kind of technically don't we're just going to be setting our skills here and these honestly they don't really matter again it's just going to be whatever you want to build the only thing that i'm going to suggest personally is that you throw some alchemy into the mix other than alchemy the one thing that you are going to want though however is security and you will see why here later so we are going to be setting security as a major skill mostly just so that we can get that uh, just slight boost of security level because we are going to need every single last bit of security that we can get for what we're going to be doing here. Other than security and alchemy though, nothing else really matters. It's just going to be whatever you want for your build. But for this specific strategy, you are going to want security to be a major skill just for that extra plus five of security. But everything else doesn't really matter except for alchemy, which only kind of matters, which we'll see later. Now this part doesn't actually matter for this build either, but I did just want to throw out a little mini factoid here. The warrior sign is actually a pretty useful one since it actually fortifies your attack damage directly. So it doesn't just like fortify your strength or like your weapon. It like actually like adds 10 damage to your base amount of damage that you do with any weapon, regardless of levels, period. It's just a permanent plus 10 damage to every weapon damage you ever do. So that is a really, really good thing to choose. It's a permanent plus 10 in damage. Like you will permanently do plus 10 damage regardless of weapons, regardless of levels if you choose that sign. So that's a really good one for a warrior at least. Just wanted to throw that out there. All right, now here's where things are actually gonna start getting serious. And it is gonna vary depending on whether or not you are playing on PC or Xbox. If you're playing on Xbox, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You're probably only gonna wanna take the limeware platter here if you're on Xbox. But if you are on PC, PC, you do have the benefit of this kind of special pick up and drop system here where you can just open your inventory and pick things up and drop them without closing the inventory. So we're actually going to do this for every single item on the shelf. Again, if you're on the Xbox, you would have to just pick up the item and then open up your inventory real quick and then drop the item before the guard comes and chases you. So again, you're probably only going to be able to pull this off with the limeware platter if you're on the Xbox. But either way, whichever way you want to do it, you're going to, of course, take your limeware platter and drop it right away so that you don't get it taken away from you when the guards yell at you. Of course, if you're on the PC, you can go even harder and just steal everything in this room. And as you can see, the guard, he doesn't seem to care very much. You can move on to everything else in this room too. Just leave that stuff on the ground. Don't pick up the stuff on the ground and then just kind of continue doing the same thing for everything else on all these other shelves. And then once you're done stealing everything from the room, you can then pick up all the stuff on the floor and move on to the next room. Now, I know we just got done picking up all this stuff and honestly, probably could just leave it all there because we're just going to be dropping it all on the floor here. I just like to drop it all here because it's out of view of the guard and I know it doesn't matter, but my brain likes to just do this part anyway. Get it out of the view of the guard so that he doesn't get any funny ideas when I pick it up again. Plus, it just kind of keeps it closer to this area so I don't have to backtrack as much. But we are going to be dropping all this stuff again because we are going to be stealing more stuff from a different room here. All right, so we're going to continue on to the next room here, which means we got to grab the ring of healing, which we're going to have to drop on the table here so that it doesn't disappear when we get caught. But the main artifact that we are here for is gonna be this warehouse key right here. And it's gonna be the same thing as the limeware platter. If you're on Xbox, you're probably just gonna wanna go for the key just for the sake of ease. But if you are on PC, you have the benefit of being able to steal all of this stuff if you want, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Because the more stuff you steal, the more money you get. And the more money you get, the easier the game is at the beginning, in my opinion. It just, it just really helps to have like that fat chunk of cash at the very beginning of the game. So I like to steal everything I can when I'm 
playing on PC at least. If you're on Xbox, you probably don't want to do this. It's going to be too tedious and it's probably just not even going to work because eventually the guards will just be permanently mad at you if you get caught enough times. Yeah, you are actually just straight up limited if you're on Xbox and you won't be able to steal everything. And even if you could steal everything, it's just going to be so tedious having to deal with the guard between every item that you steal. It's just really not worth it on Xbox to do all of it. Just get the key if you're on Xbox. Yeah, that warehouse key is gonna unlock even more items for us to steal after this. Yeah, once you are done ransacking this room, you can now start picking up all of this stuff as well as all of the stuff that you left on the floor previously. We are not gonna need to use this once you are free guard trick again after this point. So yeah, basically pick up all the stuff you left on the ground and then come back into this room and steal all this stuff, which this stuff is a lot easier to steal. There's nobody here to catch you, so it's all pretty straightforward. Most people who play the game are probably pretty familiar with stealing all this stuff, so I probably don't don't need to explain that to you but yeah steal all this stuff and then we're pretty much done here now once you've been released into Morrowind the very first thing you're gonna want to do Sorry, is find Fargoth here and give him his ring from the barrel you may think you want to keep this ring because it can heal you or whatever but you want to give him the ring because he will put in a good word for you with the local trader in town which will actually give you a super super big disposition with him which will give you good discounts it'll let you sell for high buy for low all that fun stuff so it's definitely a first step you want to take before you sell all of the stuff you just stole but yeah if you haven't guessed already we're gonna be going in here to our Isles trade house that we are going to sell literally everything we just stole to him there's only going to be a couple exceptions here you're going to want to try to miss the directions to Caius Cassades and the package for Caius Cassades basically any of these little notes here that actually have stuff written on them you're going to want to keep those but everything else is fair game the blank piece of paper all this other junk sell it all yeah it's pretty straightforward just sell a bunch of stuff basically and if you stole everything I stole you should have more things to sell than he has money so obviously you're just going to sell up to 800 gold worth then you're going to sleep for 24 hours replenish his gold and sell more i do actually have some stuff that i left in the uh, census and excess office so we're going to go and grab a couple of those things and then we're also going to pop into that warehouse that we stole the key for yeah by the way don't sell that key because we are going to need that key i forgot to mention that but yeah depending on what your starter class is you probably weren't able to grab everything from here so grab anything you forgot and then we'll head over to the warehouse also fun little random easter egg here you can hop right through this corner of the building and just escape like that but yeah the warehouse is right here directly across the street from the census and excess office you'll notice in here we have this one guard in here and this is the only person in the entire building you're gonna have to worry about he usually stays up there but he will wander over into this little storage room over here where we're gonna be stealing stuff so you're gonna want to keep an eye out for him keep an eye on your little sneak icon at the bottom left there basically just steal everything from these crates now you are gonna want to skip things like the moon sugar and the skooma since most merchants in Morwen will actually refuse to do service with you if you have that stuff in your inventory. I know you can sell the skooma at least to the scamp trader. I don't know who you can sell moon sugar to, but I'm sure you can sell it to somebody, maybe like the mud crab merchant or something. But essentially, yeah, we're just gonna be stealing everything from these crates and barrels here, everything from the upstairs of this little tower here as well. You will find that it is mostly pretty heavy items. There's a lot of armor and weapons in here. So depending on what your class is, you may want to use some of that armor. There's some like steel stuff in there, which is pretty decent. There's some like Imperial stuff in there as well. But yeah, obviously you're just gonna be stealing everything in here and then selling it again. You probably are gonna have to make more than one trip because everything in this warehouse is pretty heavy. And once you're done selling all that stuff to our aisle, which yes, I skipped that step because you know, it's pretty obvious. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is talk to this guy. He actually has a quest for you that's pretty easy. If you remember Fargo, Goth, he has a little hiding space that uh, we're trying to figure out here and what he does is he leaves 300 gold in his little hiding spot and you can kind of just keep it like you could finish the quest and like give half the gold to this guy or whatever but it, it's also an easy way to just get a free 300 gold and then like forget about the quest so we're just going to run and do that real quick just because it's such an easy little thing to do you might as well do it and get your 300 gold because you know it's literally right there but yeah you're basically just going to go up to this lighthouse here and sleep until it's nighttime and wait up top until Fargoth hides his stuff. Also, quick little bonus I forgot about, the Wraith's Wedding Dowry is that book under the bench there. If you pick that bad boy up, it's actually worth 300 gold, and I think it sells for like maybe like 170, 180 at RRL's Trade House, something like that. Normally, I would ransack like almost every building in this town, but I'm not gonna be doing that for this one just for the sake of time. But if you did want a little bit of extra starting cash, you could actually go around to all the different buildings here and ransack them all. But yeah, particularly this lighthouse has that pretty expensive book under the bench there. And for this quest, by the way, 
it doesn't work if you if you try to wait on this little post here you actually have to go up to the very top of the lighthouse and wait and then he should start coming out and you'll actually notice literally right when we did that he comes out from around the corner and now he's walking to his little spot but yeah once you see him actually walk up to the stump and then start walking away from it you can jump down and see what's in the stump and there are actually a few things in the stump there is the 300 gold of course there is a lock pick but also the engraved ring of healing is in there so if you were actually interested in the engraved ring of healing and you were half and half on giving it to fargoth well you can get it back if you did actually want it so you can actually have your cake and eat it too you can get your discount with our isle and you can get the ring of healing back now back on the topic of ransacking these homes uh you know typically you just kind of go in here and you would taunt the owner of the house until he attacks you kill the owner of the house steal everything they own and then take it to our isle to sell it for a profit but again for for the sake of this video and the sake of time, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be skipping that, but you could do that if you want. Now, at this point, we've done pretty much everything there is to do in Sedanine. So we are going to be heading to Balmora, which is actually where Fine Caius Cassades in Balmora. And of course, you could stick around here and ransack the homes for even more money. But, uh, you know, you don't really need all the money. I think what we've got now is about what you really need, which is like two to three thousand gold it is about a good enough amount of money to have before you head to Balmora. But once you're in Balmora, you're gonna wanna head, what is this, the east side of town, I guess. And you're gonna head over to Caius Cassade's house. Now this part isn't super important necessarily, but if you are trying to do some training, which we are gonna be doing a little bit of training in this video, you are gonna wanna hit up Caius Cassade's first because he will initiate you into the Blades faction which will give you access to the Blades trainers scattered across Morrowind. A few of which are actually here in Balmora, but he will give you discounts on training with the Blades trainers. So that is a very good step to take at the beginning of the game. You just wanna be able to train a little bit cheaper. It's not like super important since we are gonna be covering a pretty OP money-making method here near the end. Uh, money is gonna kind of not really be an object by the end of this. Whether or not you want to utilize the Blades trainers is honestly up to you. It will save money, but again, at the end of the day, money is going to not really be an object here. So it kind of doesn't really matter, but it is still a good first step to take if you want that cheap training. Now, the next thing I like to do is I like to join the factions in town, mostly just the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild. So we're going to pop into the Fighters Guild here first, and we're going to join the Fighters Guild specifically so that we can get the items in the Fighters Guild equipment chest over here. Now this chest is actually super handy. It's got all sorts of repair hammers. It's got some basic ammo for crossbows and bows. But most importantly, it's got these potions here. We've got some cheap and some standard restore health potions, as well as some standard restore fatigue potions, which help tremendously, they really do. But the best part is that every single fighter's guild has one of these chests, and so does every single mage's guild. Not only that, but they respawn, I think, every like week or two or something. So you can literally just do the rounds collecting equipment from every chest. You wait a couple weeks, and they'll all respawn. You can do the rounds again, get more potions, get more everything. As you can see, the mage's guild also has some pretty useful stuff here. Mage-based potions and some pretty decent scrolls too. You've got some intervention scrolls and some cure disease scrolls and some soul gems and whatnot. So all really useful stuff you're definitely going to want to utilize, especially early on in the game. Those potions definitely, definitely come in handy regardless of what build you're doing. What we're going to be doing here though is we're going to be going to Caldera. I mostly just want to show you guys the location of the scamp trader because he's going to be very, very useful, I guess, for making money in this game. So what we're going to be doing is selling some of the other stuff that we've got. I think I picked up some skooma while I was gone, but also any of those potions from those chests that we're not going to be using, we can just sell here. Now, if you are not familiar with the scamp trader he is one of two merchants in the game that will buy things for 100% of their value so you don't need to barter to get a good deal but also they are the two merchants with the highest stacks of gold so the scamp trader has 5,000 gold and will buy pretty much anything for the most part the mud crab merchant has 10,000 gold but is slightly more limited on what he will buy from you they're both really, really useful traders. The scamp trader is gonna be the more conveniently located one, and the mud crab merchant is kind of a ways out of the way, so we don't really use that guy. Now, honestly, the most important step of using the scamp trader is when you first get to this building, you're gonna actually wanna go up to the top floor here, and in these chests, or in this crate, this crate back here, in this crate back here, there are some pretty expensive orcish armor pieces hiding here, and you can kind of just steal them. Like, it doesn't even matter if you get caught stealing them, these guys, like, they care, but they don't care. 
Like they'll they'll call you a thief, but they they really will not act upon it. And I'm pretty sure you don't even get a bounty for stealing it either. I'd probably have to double check on that, but yeah, they kind of just don't care. Free gold here. There's like basically 5,000 gold just sitting up on the top floor there. So super, super easy come ups, super easy. So now that we've gotten ourselves a pretty good start here, we've gotten ourselves a pretty fine chunk of money. We can start thinking about what we want to do equipment wise. Now we're gonna be holding off on the weapon because I have a pretty awesome weapon for you guys here, regardless of what your weapon class is. I am obviously medium armor, so I'm gonna be buying some medium armor equipment. Personally, I kind of find like the easiest to just like find in stores. Like if you're just looking for equipment to buy, medium armor is gonna be like the easiest thing to just buy a full suit of. You'll, you'll pretty much find bone mold in every single city and at least like a couple pieces of dro or something but you'll pretty much never see like you know ebony armor or like orcish armor or anything crazy like that in there this part isn't really important just kind of like showing that you know once you get a fat stack of cash you can start equipping your character out but you are going to want to skip the weapon that's the only thing i'm going to throw out there you are going to want to skip the weapon because we're going to be getting ourselves a really really good weapon next now this here is honestly going to be the best part this is what really really separates the men from the boys here so what you're going to be doing you're going to head south out of balmora and you're going to follow the river all the way to the first little bridge you find if you're familiar with the fighters guild it is actually right next to the egg mine that you have to kill the poachers in so uh, you're basically going to walk all the way over to that area and the bridge should be right there all right so here is that egg mine and right off to the left here crossing the river we can see the big wooden bridge or the little wooden bridge whatever you want to call it and you're going to cross this wooden bridge and literally just walk completely straight do not turn any direction just walk completely perfectly straight i think like technically like a degree or two to the right but pretty much just walk completely straight and it'll be like the first and only little like cave door that you see uh, you know, anywhere, honestly, but straight across here, you'll see this little door here. And this little cave is called the Vasir Didant Mine, and it is actually part of a quest. Oddly enough, all you have to do is just discover this little cave. You don't actually have to really do anything. You don't have to like fight anything. Literally, all you have to do is enter the cave, maybe like turn, like walk a couple feet in, turn around and walk back out and you're done. You just you just discovered the Vasir de Dant mine, and that's all you have to do. Now you just have to report the Vasir de Dant mine to the correct person, who I will be showing you now. So first things first, you're gonna want to travel to Vivek. There's like, I think four well, different well, people, either three or four different people that you can report the Vasir de Dant mine to, but only one of them is really worth it. They all give you different types of rewards, ranging from like money to like other like little random things. But there is one person here in Vivek at the St. Olm's Canton who will give you your choice of Daedric weapon for nothing other than the location of this mine. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to travel to the St. Olm's Canton. You can use these little gondola guys to travel around Vivek, but it's going to be closest to the temple. And once you are at the temple, it's actually, it's going to be the one on the right side. I actually go to the one on the left side here first. That's St. Delon. But it's the one on the right over there, St. Olm's. And you're going to go to the very, very top to the Plaza District. And the building you're looking for is going to be up there. Once you make your way up here to the St. Olm's Plaza, you're going to be looking for this building called the Haunted Manor. Now in here, you're going to find actually under this table here, some lock picks, one of which is a master's lock pick, which is going to tie into the security major skill that we chose earlier because we're going to need to get into this level 50 lock. Now, what you'll notice is that the lock is too complex if our fatigue is all the way drained. So if you actually rest and recover your fatigue, you'll find that lock picking is a lot easier and you can actually get into this door. Once you are in here, you're going to look for this guy called Dram Barrow. And he is, I think, like House Lalu or something like that. Doesn't really matter. But you're going to talk to him and you're going to tell him the location of the Vasir Dedant mine. And once you tell him, he's going to give you your choice of Daedric weapon. And as you notice here, every single weapon class is accounted for here. Obviously, if you're a mage, you're kind of like shit out of luck. But uh, yeah, you can get yourself a bow, you can get yourself an axe, a sword, doesn't really matter. You can get yourself any weapon you want. And it's Daedric. Go ahead and look at that thing. That is, in fact, a Daedric Katana. Best long blade in the game. Pretty easy there. You can 
find a cave outside Valmora, and then within five minutes, you've got yourself one of the strongest weapons in the game. So that is going to be probably the best thing you can do for yourself for a best start in this game. As you will notice, though, it does weigh quite a bit. So you're going to have to be prepared if you do not have a high enough strength level. There's a pretty high chance that depending on what the rest of your equipment is, you might not even be able to carry it. So definitely, definitely keep that in mind, especially if you're like heavy armor, you might not actually be able to carry that. Other than that, there's not really a whole bunch more to do. There is some housing you can do, like Caius Cassades, he lets you use his house, so you can come here, use his bed, kind of like use his shelves and stuff. But I like to usually find another house around Balmora to steal, just because they're a little bit bigger, a little bit more cozy, and you can kind of make them your own a little bit more. So I usually come to this one here. This guy is actually 100% useless. He doesn't have any quests. He doesn't have any like factions or anything. He's one of the most neutral characters in the entire game. You can either just like move in with him and just keep him alive or you can taunt him to death like I normally do but this is probably one of the best houses you can get early on it's right next to Caius Cassades it's in Balmora which is a great town but it's a nice two-story house it's got pretty much everything you need in it and you can kill this guy without literally any consequences in the entire game because he's just that useless of a character but yeah not really like a whole bunch to this it's just you know if you want a house you can kind of just kill a guy and take their house. So that's a thing you can do. Nothing too crazy there. At this point though, you can pretty much just move on to doing quests. So if you are still looking for some easy money, the Mages Guild is usually pretty easy. The majority of the quests you start out with in the Mages Guild, they require like no combat or any skills or anything. They're pretty much just like fetch quests, like find these mushrooms, find these flowers, that sort of thing. So pretty easy way to get some, not really huge money, but a pretty easy way to get some easy money without like fighting or doing anything too crazy. But now that you've got equipment, you can pretty much join any faction and do any quests that you really want. You can even do the main quests. I mean, Fighters Guild shouldn't be a problem with a Daedric weapon and better equipment. So you should be good there. But really just kind of wanted to point out that now is a good time to just start like really delving into the game, doing quests, maybe making some money the right way. But if you you are still looking for the more advanced way of making money we are going to be heading back to caldera now the reason why we are going to be heading to caldera is actually for a few reasons number one there is an alchemy trainer here who has an infinite supply of alchemy ingredients which we will be exploiting to our advantage but also more importantly if you go up this staircase here there is an entire master alchemy set that you can just steal I mean, it is still stealing, so I mean, you are still committing a crime, but there's nobody up here to really, like, catch you or see what you're doing, so it is a really, really easy way to get a full Master's Alchemy set, which will really, really just set you up perfectly for doing crazy, crazy alchemy stuff. But anyways, for those who are not familiar with the Replenishing Alchemy Ingredients glitch, I do have a full video on this, and I'm not really going to go into, like, huge depth here, but essentially... Certain ingredients, they have replenishing stock. And if you trade them back and forth, you can not only just buy an infinite amount of them, but you can actually change how much they have in stock by default. So if they start with five and you buy five, their five will come back. But if you sell that five back to them, their five will turn into a 10 and that will now be their permanent value. So now whenever you trade with them, he will automatically have that 10. Even if you buy all 10 and open up the trade window again, you'll notice he still has 10. So really the first part of this exploit is to just kind of trade back and forth to get his supply big enough to where you can just buy a large quantity of alchemy ingredients all at once in bulk. Once you've done that, you can just make, yeah, you just, you just make potions infinitely. And of course, as you gain intelligence levels and alchemy levels, the potions you make will become stronger and become worth even more to the point where every potion you sell is worth like hundreds, maybe even like a thousand gold per potion. So you'll be spending like, I don't know, maybe like 20 gold to make a potion and then you'll sell the potion for a thousand gold or, you know, a hundred gold, whatever it is. And so you can really see how you kind of just start multiplying money after a while. You just buy a hundred ingredients. All of a sudden you've got $10,000 worth of potions. Sell those to the scamp trader. Keep doing that back and forth. And not only is this a really, really good way of getting money, but it's actually a really good way of power training, which is why we actually made alchemy a minor or major skill so that every time we gain an alchemy level, we actually gain progress towards a character level, which means that we can not only just get rich doing this, depending on what your starting alchemy level is, you should be able to gain 
at least like seven character levels, something like that. If you started with like less than 30 alchemy, you should be able to get seven character levels gained. And if you utilize that in conjunction with efficient leveling, you can actually get a really, really overpowered character pretty early on in the game, which doesn't really sound like it would work when you're only leveling up alchemy, but it does work. You just have to kind of trust the process. All that's really left to do once you've done enough money making. And this again ties in with the alchemy. When you're getting all those levels, you are going to want to do some training if you want to do some efficient leveling. And of course, with all of that alchemy selling, you're going to have plenty of money for doing training. So what I typically do is I'll just kind of bounce back and forth between Caldera and like the Fighters Guild or maybe the Mages Guild or the Thieves Guild, depending on what skills I'm trying to raise. And I'll essentially get my character level up from doing alchemy. And then I'll try to find any miscellaneous skills that I can level up. Since the miscellaneous skills do not raise your character level, you can raise these miscellaneous skills to get your level up bonus without affecting the like 10 out of 10 thing for your character level or whatever. So yeah, the only other step is to just kind of train really. Pretty much the best thing to do with money in this game is to train your skills. So yeah, essentially you get your money from alchemy, you train your skills here, and uh, you get your efficient level ups or you don't either way. That's pretty much the only thing money is good for in this game is training your character and doing things like spell making or enchantment. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's like the best start to this game, in my opinion, a very generic start. Honestly, I might make a video that goes more in depth and more in detail to like specific builds. So like, you know, whether it's a, a mage or an archer or stealth build or whatever, there are kind of like better starts that you could do specifically for those builds. But it's like as far as like a generic generic best start in Morrowind goes. I feel like these are the steps that most people should be taking when they first jump into the game. This is, in my opinion, the best way to do it. It's going to give you like the best chance early on in the game. And of course, it's pretty hard to say no to that free Daedric weapon literally at level one. So there's more you could do. You could go search out more better equipment if you want. You can go to different towns, visit different blacksmiths and whatnot see what they have to offer some places are going to have some higher level equipment if that's what you're looking for otherwise yeah it's just time to like do quests and explore and like play the game really but yeah that's it for this one just wanted to show you guys what i consider to be the best start in morrowind if you guys enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way uh, please make sure to leave a like it definitely helps me out helps out that algorithm and all that so if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you check out any more of this content or any other gaming content for that matter and of course as always for as little as 99 cents a month you can become a channel member help support this channel monetarily help me pay some bills around here that sort of thing but yeah that means i've been plock the master gamer with some elder scrolls 3 morrowind and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out